Hi, welcome back. And this time I want to talk to you a little bit about grooming because the way you look makes a certain statement. Now imagine this, I'm making this video, I've decided to look a bit casual so I'd be more approachable to you. I've decided on bright colors. Why? Because I wanted to have the vibrancy, wanted you to look at me and say, wow, she's pretty vibrant. That's why the colors. If I were to wear black, um, you would have a different image, okay? If I were to put my hair up, and if I were to wear a formal business attire, we'd have a different relationship. We'd have a different statement coming out of me, okay? So how I choose my outfits or my look depends on what kind of image I want to project. Um, I'm not one to say that there's only one rule about grooming. I know there's uh, the traditional way of thinking. It's like, okay, a man has to wear this color suit, this color tie, etc which of course is still very much valid, the power look, yeah? And women, what do they wear? But I tend to say that I'd like to kind of pass on to you this wisdom about making your own judgments because I can't be there all of the time telling you what to, what to wear, okay? So it's probably better just to pass on to you some tips about what are the questions you need to ask in deciding what to wear, okay? And how to look. So first of all, what kind of an event is it? Okay, so it could be a networking event. It could also be some, some other events. For instance, I was um, involved with the British Chamber of Commerce, and one time I got invited to the Queen's birthday. Okay, the Queen's birthday, even though we were celebrating in Jakarta, and we, we saw the celebration through this big video um, equipment, and at the same time, we were also celebrating the marriage of William and Kate. The way people dress at that function was different than the normal networking nights we had at the Chamber of Commerce. People wore glitters, you know, people wore extra jewelry for the women. The men even dressed up like, like they actually, you know, dressed up more than usual because it was a special event and it was celebrating a birthday and a wedding. Okay, so even though the queen wasn't there, we, we had to respect the occasion. In summer months, you'd see some groups would have summer parties, so summer networking events. So they'd have a barbecue, they'd have the event around the pool, and because I was living in a tropical country, you don't wear suits when you're outside, okay? You'll be the, the only one melting away in your sweat. So at that particular point, sometimes I would go with sleeveless, sometimes I would go with a skirt instead of long pants, sometimes I would wear brighter colors. I know some of the men, they they take off their jackets very, very quickly. They roll up their sleeves. It's all very, very casual. You know, you don't have to go home and change to a Hawaiian shirt, but you can, you know, if you want to. But, and some people did, actually. So it just depends, okay? And there's, of course, some networking events where it's pretty normal and you can go with your normal uh, grooming attire. So number one question is, what kind of event is it? Okay, so check with the organizer. Um, is there a special dress code? Is there a suggested dress code? You know, and if they don't tell you, I mean, just just make a guess. You know, what kind of venue is it located in? Is it five star, more of a three star, or what kind of hotel or venue are they holding it in? Um, the second thing I want to ask you is, what image are you trying to project? You know, there are. For instance, if you're a woman and you're coming in with this power suit, power pants, power shoes, everything power, in fact, you look like a man and you even put on a tie, that can work with some people, but it gives a different image than if you go into this, you know, put your hair up, uh, black dress, high heels, um, nice stockings, a bit of jewelry, it gives a completely different impression. Now, so the important thing is, how do you want to be perceived? You know, a woman dressing up as a man, or like manly dresses, sometimes can get her in a group, or can get her to be perceived as a threat to a group of males. It depends. Yeah, it depends. So you've got to understand, where is this going to take you? If you're going too feminine, for instance, if you're going with, you know, I'm talking mostly to women executives, obviously, but if you're going with a deep V-neck, 
<laughs> you know, no arms and you're going with heavy makeup and heavy jewelry. You might not even fit into a business setting. People might think of you as other thing. Okay. So be careful with that too. Yeah. You want to be feminine, but how do you keep it neat? How do you keep it still professional looking? Yeah. You want to be professional looking, but how do you want to balance it with femininity? Okay. I've always found, this is just a personal experience. I've always found that as a woman in business, and I do hang around a lot of men and I do go into male dominated industries a lot. I do find that preserving your femininity, keeping your feminine look, wearing that high heels, um, having a bit of jewelry and makeup, it helps because it, it preserves your individuality as a woman. And they do respect that. And it does keep you, set you apart and enable you to have a certain unique point that men don't have. But that's just a personal story. Now for the men. Again, um, power look is typically darker suits. Navy blue, black, yes, but navy blues, small pinstripes, those are very nice. Power look is also typically reddish types of tie. It could be, you know, the striped thing or solid color. Um, there are some people who are in the artistic industry. Perhaps they're architects, perhaps they're interior designers, photo photographers. They have their own looks. They don't want to look like corporates. That's fine. So they might gel up their hair or they might, they might have really bright colored tie. And that's just a statement they're getting at. But they still respect the occasion by dressing up or even if the photographer just wears a long sleeve uh, black uh, outfit, black pants, black shoes, black shirt, it still looks neat. Okay, so I'm not here to say you've got to look like this all the time, but you've got to understand what are you trying to project and uh, live with the consequences, okay? Um, for grooming standards, women... Um, Try to have a bit of heels on your shoes simply because I think the gait, the way we walk and the way we, the, our poise is, our posture is better when we're wearing heels. The way we walk is, is more um, poised when we're wearing heels for some reason. We, we have to pay attention. Um, when we're wearing flats sometimes, I had an issue with my feet and I had to wear flats because I couldn't wear heels. Um, I felt I felt like I was slouching, and I was because there was somebody taking pictures, and I saw myself. Um, I, I felt like I could just I was just too relaxed, and I didn't keep my poise. So as much as I can, even though I wasn't allowed to wear high heels anymore, but if if I could wear a bit of heels, that would really really help with at least the way I my posture and my poise. Men just make sure things match from top to bottom. And unless for some artistic purpose you don't want it to match, the match is always a good professional image. Okay, so um, if you're colorblind, like I have, uh, my brother is colorblind, he typically asks around, like what color is this, what color is this, before he puts it on, you know, but make sure you get help on that issue. Make sure things match. Something else about grooming, of course, is not just about the clothes, but it's about the energy or how fresh you are. If you can um, retouch your makeup, if you if you can um, you know brush your hair, <laughs> you know put on a fresh uh, clothing or at least wash your face or something. You know some people sweat more than others. Some people look fresh by nature. Some people can't sustain freshness past two hours. So get to know yourself. Some people have body odor. Some people don't. Some people have mouth odor, but uh, bad breath, some people don't. Just make sure that you pay attention to all those things. Women, if you're not comfortable wearing um, nail polish, at least wear a clear one because it does give a, a bit of a sparkle. It does give a bit of um it looks like you're paying attention to how you look, okay? Um, when you are uh, in a networking situation and also pay attention about social distance. I mean, there are certain cultures where, you know, getting this close to someone talking is actually okay. But there are certain cultures where you've got to be a certain centimeters or perhaps half a meter apart in order for to let the other person feel more comfortable talking to you. So be aware of these social and cultural differences. Let's say you're coming from a country that, you know, where 
close is best, okay? And then you'll become an expatriate or you move to a different country where distance is best. Now, you've got to make sure that you're attentive to that. And I think if you spend enough time observing the people around you, not just being too engrossed and involved in yourself, you will start discovering things um, that you may need to adjust about your habits in order for you to be part of the group. So talking about grooming, decide for yourself. I mean, what are some of the things that you want to improve on in your grooming? Um, maybe in the way you stand, maybe in the way you walk, maybe in the way what you wear how you talk to people, how you clean yourself up before a networking function. Um, jot down a few notes and um, let's proceed to the next video.